outside one closed, then this one open. But the van come up here and let you out, and that was your first sort of knowledge of the blocks. But as you got out of the van, see the boys and all the, along the windows there, could see who was getting out. And sometimes they knew us and sometimes they didn't. That's if you were just being newly yes. committed. But after a while then. But, um, <coughs> and all of course, all of these grills would have been, we call them grills, but they would all have been closed. And um, you see, you'd have had the, well, of course the lock's off now, and this would have had to been open for you. And you'd have come through here, and then you'd have been, you'd have stood here, and this would have been closed, and then that was locked from a, see the prison officer outside there? This was closed, and then another screw would come across here and open this. And believe it or not, we always call this the circle. Right. And basically the reason this was known as the circle, the circle is a term that has come from the older prisons. Mm -hmm. The Crumlin mm -hmm. Road, yes, where, where it was the, an actual. It was actually circle. a circle. Now, there have been some slight changes since I was here, but in my time, that would have been the principal officer's room. The PO would have been in there. Uh, then that was the. Uh, this here would have been the Screws Canteen. Uh, this, in my time, would have been used as the governor's office. If the governor had to see you, if you had any business with the governor. Now, the furniture seems to have changed a bit. But usually, the desk, he would have sat across here. Now, there's three desks here, but usually he would have sat here the t desk would have been out and you'd been marched in to screws either side you would have marched, marched in and you had to stand to attention while you'd done your business with the, with the governor. Now very rarely, very very rarely would you ever see what we call the number one governor. That's the man in charge of the whole complex. Usually you dealt with assistant governors. I think that's probably a power room or something, I'm not sure what's in there. Yeah, 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 it seems to be, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, the canteen. Now, I think in my time that room used to be used for the, the welfare probation. So if you wanted to set a change of visit or something like that, you could have come out and talked to probation and asked them. Right. They would have contacted the family. Uh, now, Again, if I can remember correctly, in my time, yes, that's the medic's office. For you, if, see, if you had to get, or, or the doctor's office for that matter, so if you had to get medication or examined or anything, that was your first protocol. Very rarely right. did you go down to the hospital. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah. This is basically. So maybe medic. fellas like Pat or that, that had trouble with the stomach or something. Would have been out here regularly. Out here regularly. And you could come out for occasionally. <coughs> now, I'm not sure what way that weighing scales works, but there used to be a weighing scales. And because if you can think of it, we weren't encouraged to weigh ourselves for our fitness. Mm -hmm. The authorities weighed us. They wanted to see what weight yes. we were. So by and large, what used to happen, now I'm not sure what type of thing this works on, but usually the scale would have been around the other side on, on some of these and things like right. that, you know? And the, um, I'm not sure just how it worked, but I remember on one famous occasion, um, a friend of ours from Stewartstown was very concerned about his weight. But he, invited, he, he brought one of his friends out to monitor his weight. And Liam constantly read off the wrong... Added to it. Added a, a, a stone. <laughs> um, I don't know what that was for. Pro, the, these were uh, for the staff, male and female. Where's the, the monitoring room? Then? Where, that right. not been here as well, wasn't it? 
in my time, it was here. Ah, there's the door blocked up. Now, that door has been blocked up since the escape. Mm -hmm. uh, but there used to be a, a grill on it. Yeah, that's, you, there's the door, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Now, what happened was, during the escape... Tea bags, 5 pH. The, uh, the, the, um, at the time of the escape, and why it changed was, the, all the keys of the block were in there. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the boys, one of the IRA boys, come across and put a gun in and ordered them to hand out the keys. And one of the prison officers refused, and he was shot. And then they got the keys out and opened it. And once they got the control room, they controlled the block. Now, obviously, the report that was conducted into the whole escape decided that this was too big of a risk. So it meant then that the prison officer in charge of the control room was hermetically sealed away from this part of the prison. And I'm not sure, uh, presumably you get in from somewhere else now, but uh, that, that changed thereafter. Now, when you were brought in, this was the first place you come to into the circle, you were stood here. And I remember when I come onto the blanket, I was met here by the PO, and the PO asked me what I was doing, and then they actually made me strip in the circle and sent me naked down the wing. were held and bear in mind that again that all these were locked, locked. Uh -huh. and you had another prison officer in there. So for prison education this room here was for prison education and then I don't know what this is to be honest what this here is but this was where like, most of the education would have classes and whatnot would have taken place because you're still to a large extent within the wing and you're not in a you know you're not in the circle or anything. But again these are all observation hatches now when blocked off. But you're coming here thing. you're coming here into the wing and again all it's of this all is locked always, again. always locked. And the, the, this is, is just the so you'd have stood here before that was opened again. Yeah, this locked that was up. locked, and then that would have been opened up. And you never. This was where we spent most of our time. Now, again, these are all blocked off. Those are the ablutions in there. Now we didn't have these uh, doors or doors whatever. or whatever you would call them in my time. This place was just open, and uh, there was just this is. The urinal you washed there, three or four showers and there's a bath, and that's basically 
and this hasn't changed really apart from from these here since since my time. And that's where you would have washed your clothes. Men would have washed rummers and that. It's not that's not the sluice for the slop out. The slop out's down here. Now that's just a thing we should guess. One of these had an element in it. In there. There would have been. Yeah, you see down there? Mm -hmm. That's just an ordinary sink. This one here had a an electric element for and hot boiled you boiled water for washing dishes and what like that. But we used to have here then, always along here was what was called the hot plate. Now, it was about, you know, about that length there, and it was metal. And just as the name suggests, it was a, it was a hot, not an oven that you could cook in, but it kept food warm, mm -hmm. and it was a large piece of thing. And what happened was, the meals come up from the, canteen, from the cookhouse on a lorry, I mean, that's how the escape happened because the boys captured the lorry. But the food come up and it was brought in then on a, a sort of a big trolley. And they come up in hot cases, that they were, they were metal cases that kept the heat in. Now they weren't, they weren't that warm, but yeah. they kept the, the, the food. And they were shoved, come in through the grill, and the boys would have taken out the, trolley, the containers of potatoes and stew and custard and that, and put them into the hot plate. And then, whenever the prisoner, the prisoners come to eat, there was tables all up and down here. And you come in, and you just formed a queue along here. You come in that door there, through that grill. You formed a queue here, and you stood, and you got your plate of food, and you went down, and you ate it down there. And this place was full of, this is what it was. Now, this was also the, the recreation room. Right. So when you were let out at night, there was a television down in the corner and you could have watched the television. It was a, a dartboard and there was, there was a few other games that most people didn't play, drafts and things like that. Most people just come here to talk. Aye. Or play a snooker. Snooker was always very popular. Now this was a big, big concession here. This size of a table. Because for a long time there was only a wee small table that was pretty useless. Now I never really bothered playing snooker, I never could get the hang of it. But a lot of lads were very fond of that. But again all these grills were closed. So How long would you have got in the evening? Uh, from half five to I think it was half eight. The doors opened at half five. Now in the summer now in the summer you could maybe get out to the yard.
this is a multi-gem. Uh, this, is, this is, just as it says, this come in in May time. Now there's something has changed here. I can see it. It's turnstead to let people out. And there's a telephone box. This was all, this, this is all new to me. That wasn't here in May time. Tell the idea of telephones. What was here actually, this was the slop house. Right. When you brought your pole and emptied it out there. No, not top it into the yard. There was a. Mm. There was so a, the turnstile, no, that's obviously that's all out been into the yard. pushed through and knocked out there. That wasn't there in my time. Uh, this was still the, the multi gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what's known as cell 26. This is, was a larger cell. Now, in cell 26, something is. This type of facility wasn't here in my time. Cell 26, I think, originally was intended for the orderlies. Right. And orderlies are the people who um, would serve the food. Their, their job in the prison. In theory, all their prisoners would have went out to the workshops to work. But the orderlies would have stayed back and they swept the floors and gave out the food and kept the place neat and tidy. And the idea being that the orderlies would have used this cell, four orderlies in this cell, because they had to be released earlier in the morning. So they would have the breakfast ready and right. they had a different routine on occasions. But it never really come to that. We, we never used orderlies in that fashion because we shared mm -hmm. the workout. And cell 26 become the meeting room for the prisoners. Right. Right. And you have meetings, all sorts of meetings took place here more often than in the canteen because the screws found it harder to monitor what we were saying and this was the this is the famous cell 26 uh, and after that the cells are pretty much the same uh, in my time you very often cell 2 was used for the class office or the prison officers used that that was like what they called the class office right depending just how many people were about but it's just another prison cell. All the cells after this are the same and the same size. And I was going to say, you can notice the difference in size as you made the comment about the hospital yeah, cells. Yeah. Now, the, uh, as time went by, when I was first brought to the blocks, yeah, that's in cell sanitation, one of those. Uh, and that's what the boys hold is called a, ga a water gallon. I, I take it there's probably five litres or something, it was a gallon. But um, in my time we didn't have that type of built-in cupboard, but it's not greatly changed. But the, the cells haven't changed, the windows are higher. Uh, when I come here first, invariably we had a double bunk, two men to one of these cells, not one but two mm -hmm. men. And uh, the lights have changed, there, was, there used to be a light up there. Uh, and the, uh, those are the pipes. Uh, you'll notice if you take a look down there that there's a metal plate. Can you see the metal plate yeah. there? Now, these are the pipes. What, do you see the metal plate? That metal plate in there that has been, uh, that's welded or riveted into the wall. Now, the reason for that was that prior to the plate going up and while on the blanket and on punishment, the boys got plastic knives and dug out the cement round the pipes and then they would send through notes messages. and tobacco and messages to one another. And they used to, we, it was one of the, the, the uh, great values that we got from the Bible which every prisoner, God bless the British system, but every prisoner has to have a Bible. And they couldn't prevent us having a Bible. You don't, they don't have to feed you, but they have to give you a Bible. And we got the Bible and you take a, a long strip off the Bible and you flatten it out and you put sprinkling of tobacco. If we could get tobacco, we'd get a sprinkling of tobacco, roll it up and push it through. Or you'd even push a light through on a wick. And how you made a wick was we had uh, any piece of 
cotton towel would be getting you to string out of the towel and you unlo unloosened it and made it into a wick. And then we used to use a, we, we would smuggle in a flint from a lighter and a small piece, you know, the tube of a, of a barrel, the inside mm -hmm. of the barrel mm -hmm. where the ink runs, mm -hmm. piece of that and put the wick or the, or the flint into the top of that. Make a wee bit of cotton and set it down on the floor and then get either a wheel from a lighter. You just took the wheel out of the lighter, you didn't mm -hmm. get either the wheel or a piece of a razor blade, the tiny sweet piece of a razor blade, as long as you get a spark. You get the spark. Flick, 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 until that would light up. And once that lit up, then you put your, your wick into it and got the wick lit and you had a wee spark. And I seen them coming right down from cell to two, right the to the bottom, down. down the wing. And Ben would have been smoking just a sprinkling of, of, of tobacco. Now in my time the windows, were, the glass was gone, in the blanket desk the mm -hmm. glass was gone. All of this was gone, there was no cell furniture but only two of these. No pillows or anything like that. Three blankets, two mattresses, two chamber pots, a gallon of water and the Bibles and two plastic mugs. Our men used to stand on the pipes here like that and they would shout, not necessarily to their friends across the yard, but they would shout up to the boys up and down the wing, or they would go down if it was the next cell to, sh to talk in. Very often men spent hours with their head up against that wall talking. Other times they'd be out the window. And the other great one was, now the thing about it is you could have a relatively private conversation. Yes. News sometimes during the blanket days travelled, well often travelled up and down the pipes, but it never was too reliable because the famous story that's told is, uh, because bear in mind that although there's a lot of Irish spoken and a lot of Irish learned, the, the, the standard of Irish wasn't universal and some mm -hmm. men had a better knowledge than others. But there was a, an incident where, I'm not sure whether a train or a car, something, something happened around killing the Saggart in County Armagh or down, wherever killing the Saggart is. But by the time the word had got down the pipes to the bottom, the word was out that somebody had killed a saggart, which <laughs> a uh, had killed a priest, which is a very different, different thing <laughs> totally all, different. altogether. <laughs> But the other way that we used to do a lot of conversing was from behind the door. And actually, I spent a lot of time on the blanket uh, doing what was known as lects or, or lectures in Irish history for the unfortunates that listened to me. But I would stand, because we were never out of the cell, mm -hmm. and I would stand behind the door, and because there's a chink in the door, I'll just make sure this thing do not, won't lock. But I would stand behind the door when the door was locked, and I can't, and I would just shout, stand here and shout out the side of the door. 
And my voice, my voice would carry. Now, I very rarely, you see, the, the, the authorities re copped on to a lot of these things, so the, the troublemakers usually were kept either at either end. <laughs> and I usually spent the time at the end of the wing. And I had to, my voice had to travel up the whole wing. Uh, very often I'd have been around about 18 or 19. And I'd have been in shouting for all I was worth up and, up and down the lot from behind the door. Yep, you'll see it there. There's a small chink at the side of the door. God, it's and this is, this is where I would be standing. Shouting out. And the first word you shouted was, Yes to go! Listen. Listen, everyone. And then the, the boys would listen. Someone. So it was H3 then that you and Porrick shared a cell? Uh, in fact, it might even have been in H4. Was it? I thought I was wondering, was it? Because it probably was in H4. And if I remember rightly, we were in one of these end cells. And that was the double bunk? No, no. Nope. Oh yes, the double bunk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two man cell up and down. They really only changed that after the escape because they felt that two men in a cell give too much cover. Uh, and how long were you used together in the cell? Well, only maybe a, about, maybe a couple of months in all. It wasn't uh, that long. It, no, but it was a while that... Oh, we did. Yes. We, we had a while. And then there was other times we weren't in the same cell, but we would have run into each other on different occasions. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, again, this is the yard, we would then. never have been in there. That was patrolled by the, the, the this is the, the yard. Now in my time, this type of uh, corrugated iron was across that one as well. We didn't, have, we didn't have access to both yards. Right. We only had access to this yard here. Wh whichever wing you were in, you had access to the, to the yard. There was a yard for each wing? Yep. And this was all across here blocked off with that type of corrugated iron there. Would have been across here and across there. And that was a sterile area that only the prison officers could access right. from the circle. So this was our yard and in, I suppose in some ways our world and we played football and men would have run around it and that's what we had. Mm -hmm.